Jared Poland, Fronose Photo. Dot com here in Philadelphia overlooking the art museum. That's right, Rocky ran up those stairs one day. So what am I doing here today on a high perch? I'm gonna be photographing those fireworks from a different angle because the parkway has 500,000 people down there and that's a lot of people and I don't wanna be there. So, how am I gonna do this? Oh, don't forget Joe Jonas is gonna be here tonight and he's hot. I love Joe Jonas, he's just like so dreamy. Anyway, fireworks, we're gonna shoot them. What am I doing? I'm gonna put the D7000 right here. That's gonna photograph, that's gonna do video of everything that's going on out there. Second, I'm gonna be shooting with the D4. The D4 is gonna have on the first person shooter camera on top, the contour cam, and I'm gonna wear the mic so you can hear whatever's going on. Um, other than that, I'm using my Vanguard tripods today. So how are we gonna do this? Low ISO, bump your aperture up. We're looking at F11 to F16. Why are we gonna do that? So that you get a lot in focus. Speaking of focus, how are we going to focus on the fireworks? Some people say do it in infinity focus. I don't like infinity focus. I wait till a firework goes off, then I set it into manual, and I lock it in on the sky. I just find a firework, I lock it really quick, go to manual, boom, you're ready to go. Every picture should be in focus from that point. So then what are you gonna do with your shutter speed? Holy crap, that's a loud sound. What are you gonna do with your shutter speed? You're gonna shoot it on bulb. What Bulb's gonna do is I'm gonna press the button down, fireworks gonna go off, as soon as it explodes, let my finger go, closes the shutter, that's gonna work. If you don't have Bulb setting, you can set it to 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and put a black card in front of it when you're done shooting. Make your own shutter, basically, so that it doesn't stay open too long. And that's really it. So coming up after this, we are going to shoot the fireworks show that's happening here in Philadelphia over the Philadelphia Art Museum. And I can't wait for Joe Jonas to come on stage. I'm just gonna yell. That's what we're gonna do, so we'll be right back. So let's take a look at the fireworks shots that I captured on July 4th, 2012 from Philadelphia when I was in my buddy's apartment who is 26th floor overlooking the art museum where the concert is and also the fireworks. So I did take video. I used the D7000 with the 14 to 24 to 8 as I thought that the fireworks may be closer and I started with the 24 to 70 on my camera and then realized that I need to have the 70 to 200 on for more reach because I was further away. But you can see some of the video running now. It is pretty far away, so it's not as impactful as if I was uh, like last year. But I will say that I thought that I didn't get anything good. And I didn't edit these for like a week or so until I sat down and looked at them and I realized there were some good pictures there. There are things that I would like to do better in the future and as we work through this, I'm going to tell you some of those things that I would like to do better and maybe there are tips that you can use or you have used for your fireworks shots. So let's take a look. Oh, let me make the screen bigger. There. That. One second. I, uh, one second F9, ISO 125, 112 millimeters. So you can see what I was going for here. How did I focus on this? Well, I waited for some fireworks to go off and then I manually focused right about here. I focused there, or actually I may have focused also on the art museum because the fireworks are gonna be somewhere around there. So you can see that this is one of those shots where you hold the shutter for a second, if it track, actually, no, I'm going to start that one over again. When it's, this, when it's one second, that means you didn't hold the shutter for that long. It's more like boom, and you don't track the trajectory of the shells going off, so you don't get the track kind of like this. These have already exploded, then I snap the button. So there's different ways you can do it. And as you move forward, you can see that you follow this, and this is open for a little longer, 2.6, so you get a longer spread of the fireworks going off but I'm at F13, I'm at 200 ISO. That's in the range that I suggested. You know, one to 200 ISO, F11 to F16, uh, and then anywhere from one to six seconds. It all depends on what you're shooting. Now, I would have loved to have shot some verticals, but the problem was I didn't have the, I didn't put the plate on the proper portion of the 70 to 200 in the, in the, in the shoe in the um, tripod collar. If I did that, I would have been able to rotate the camera instead of trying to go vertical with a heavy camera that just went like this with the lens falling. So that's why there are no verticals here. I would have loved to have them, but I didn't get them. Four seconds. This time I waited. You get the whole firework taken off. You get the whole explosion going on and it looks really good. F13 again, this time 85 millimeters. So there's times that I pulled back 
and then there was times that I zoomed in, but I definitely didn't want to cut off the fireworks. So here's one where I did zoom in more, and this one's very nice. Look at the 3.4 seconds. You have the art museum down here, and these are this is a nice firework. I like the way that these look. Now, in the background, I've got this. I've got the lights so that a plane doesn't crash into it. Um, what, I, what, what probably would be better is if I was down on the parkway with all of the people and I had a better angle, a lower angle would make the fireworks look more extreme. I think these are very generic type shots. Sure, they're fine for, for photos, but straight on, looking down the art museum, uh, parkway may have been better. So it's one of those things. I, think that, I thought that this would be good because I was close and I thought I was close enough and I thought that it would really give you the the feel of it but I feel that when you're closer to the fireworks you're shooting up into the sky I think that's going to give you a better angle and it was good to see this from the distance because it's all a learning experience um, 1.3 seconds this is nice as well and you can see at 4.8 seconds what I did here will you load already why aren't you loading thank you um, you can see that there are no trails this is the time where I waited until it already took off, and right when it was about to explode, I pressed the shutter down and left it open for 4.8 seconds. So all we have here is just the explosion and not the trails. Because there's different types of photos you can get. You can get the ones with the trails, you can get the ones with the explosions. So you have about 15 minutes, at least this one gave me 15 minutes to play around and get these photos. Um, I like these type of shots, there's more going on. It would have been nice if I was able to shoot tighter, um, but I yeah, I could have gone another 100 millimeters. But see, this one I went further so I can leave it open uh, so that I didn't cut the top off. It's nice that you've got this down here. It's nice and sharp. You've got this over here. Looks good, too. And, and as we get closer to the end, ah, this is great. 5.7 seconds. That's really cool, too, to leave it open for 5.7 seconds at F14 ISO 200. Look what's going on here. You've got these explosions and you've got the ground explosions, and it makes for a really cool image. Vertical, again, let's just, let's just look at it vertically and see what would happen. Just to get a, a, a feel. Oop, hey. Oop, hey. Develop. Crop. Vertical. Now, it may not be perfect. Yeah, you wouldn't want to cut it off, but it would look good if it was a vertical. I do like that. I like the colors in this. So I'm pretty happy with what I was able to capture. I know you guys captured some really nice ones. This is nice as well at 3.1 seconds. I waited again until the fireworks were at the top and then exploded so you don't get that trail. It's just like boom, and they're really cool. This is one of my favorite ones. I like the dancing of the light, 3.3 seconds. It seems that three second mark, two to three seconds looks pretty good. I like this one as well. Fireworks inside of fireworks, 2.8 seconds. F14, nice color. And we're getting close to the finale where a lot of stuff happened. Look at this, look, look at all the explosions here. 3.8 seconds, this time I followed the track of some of them, had the explosions of the other. And then I think we're going to come up on some nice ground explosions. I don't know where this one's coming from, uh, but that's some nice color. This is a really big explosion. Five seconds this time. This one was tracking a couple of them until they exploded. And this is near the finale. Is that one of the last ones? Yeah, it's the second to last one. But look at that. Six whole seconds, F-18. you got all the ground stuff going on. You've got the big ones going on. And you got the last one right here, which is... I, one of my favorite ones. Look at the look at these explosions right here. Look how nice they look on the ground. Nice, nice, nice. That looks really good. So, those are my fireworks from July 4th, 2012. I know you guys got a ton of stuff. You can see all the settings here on the screen, so you can try it yourself either next year or anytime the fireworks are going off. But this is the ongoing series because this is the third or fourth video I've made about fireworks. Uh, so, yeah, the tips are simple. I, found, I find personally, well, you need to be on a tripod, you need to either shoot manual or with a long exposure where you can block the front of the lens um, for like a five, six second exposure. You move the cardboard so that light doesn't interfere with it. Um, F11 to F18 or F11 to F16, 100 or 200 ISO at anywhere from one second to six or seven seconds. Just experiment with it. You have a good 10 to 15 minutes 
during these firework shows to capture something. Uh, so that's that's it. You know, I had fun. I learned again something this year. Next year, I will try something different. So it's an ongoing process, and it's all about getting out there and trying something different and just shooting and not being happy with the same shots year in and year out. And there you've got it. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Are you subscribed yet on the YouTube channel? Well, click this subscribe button right here. Also click this box if you want to be emailed every time I upload a new video so you can get the latest video uploads as they happen. And also, if you haven't signed up for the free user's guide, sign up right here. Put your name, email address in here. Hit send it. You will get a free ebook sent to your email as well as a link to a 60 minute long video on flash photography in the studio that Adam and I created. So please do that and we'll see you.